Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geek and Emmy Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to be continuing from our previous two tutorials on creating a web view within the Swift language. Uh, in this one, which is the third and final part of our mini series, we're going to be focusing on adding an activity indicator. Now what this does is basically indicates to our users that there's activity happening on the screen. Now we're going to be combining it with our web view. So when the web view loads, we're going to animate the activity indicator to our users. And when the web view has stopped, we're then going to completely hide the activity indicator from the view altogether. Now this is great for if your users have a really slow internet connection and we can kind of simulate and show them on the screen that something is happening. So just bear with us while we get your content to you. So let's jump straight in to the third and final tutorial in this mini series on creating a web view application within the Swift language. On the simulator here, you can see what we created in our previous two tutorials on creating a web view application within the Swift language. We give the ability to display any website we want within our web view within our application and even added web view controls to go forward back and even refresh the screen itself. In the previous tutorial, we added in our web view search bar. You can see here, I could type in any website I want. So let's type in google.com, press our search bar button and then depending on how quick your internet connection is, loads up that web view that we created, which is brilliant. The only thing that's missing now is having a activity indicator. Now again, what this does is simply, if I jump back into our application here and go to our main storyboard, this indicates activity to our user. So whether you're on your own computer, your Mac or your Windows computer, and you're waiting for something to happen and the egg timer comes up on your uh, mouse, that's almost like an activity indicator. You, you're simply being told there's something happening, so just bear with us while we get it done. And this is great for if your users have really slow internet connection. So if they're loading up a web view for the first time, it may take a while. And until it loads, they're staring at a blank white screen, which is not good for them because they could possibly think your application's not working. So if you indicate activities happening with our activity indicator, they know something's happening and they're going to stick around until it waits to load up. So the first thing you're going to do then is just quickly find our activity indicator within our interface builder. I believe it's at the top there. There we go. Drag and drop that in. It's quite small to initially. So we're going to change the style to a large white and then change the color. Let's go for a nice blue color there. So it stands out a lot better. And I'm going to center that to our web view and then add in some missing constraints. So that resizes to the different um, screens that we're going to be creating this application for. Okay, so we've got that in. It's placed in the middle and it's visible when the application first loads up. So if we select it, we need to make sure that we select hides when stopped. So when this is not animating and being called into action, it's gonna be hidden from the view. So initially it's gonna be hidden, but it's gonna come straight into play because when we first load up the application, the web view loads and we need to indicate the activity. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is bring up our assistant editor and I'm gonna create an outlet for it. So I'm gonna control click or right click and drag it over underneath our search bar outlet. And I'll call it act int short for activity indicator and connect that up. Okay, so we've got that in. There's one more thing we need to do. Now to give it the ability to animate when the web view's loading and stop animating when the web view has stopped, we need to rely on function statements. Now in the previous tutorial, we relied on this function statement to give us the ability to search for more whatever we enter within our search bar. Now this works off because we set our search bar to the delegate. Now we don't set the activity indicator itself as the delegate, because with these function statements are going to be called upon the web view itself. And what we need to do is set the actual web view itself to the delegate. So select our web view, control click or right click and drag that up to our files owner and select delegate. So when the web view starts loading and kind of calls upon or performs these function statements, it's then going to read to start animating or stop animating our activity indicator. Okay, so now we can close our assistant editor, go back to our standard editor and jump into our view controller.swift. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do then, I'm going to space out this section down below here so you can clearly see what we're typing. And we're going to create our first function statement. So we type out our function here. And what we type out is our web view did start load. And we do our bracket there, have our underscore space colon. And that's going to be linked up to a space UI web view 
end that with a bracket and then put in our parentheses bracket there. So this function statement just gets simply called upon any web view that starts to load that has the Delica linked to it. So this is all it's simply doing. We're keeping it nice and basic and simple. I'm going to copy and paste it. So we've got two. And rather than this time did start load, it's going to did finish load. There we go. And from within it, we're going to start with our did start. So when the web view starts to load up, it wants to get our activity indicator to simply start animating. That's all it's going to do. And by start animating, it just simply gets it and starts making it spin round in a nice circle. And then when the web view does finish loading up, so it's finished loading, it's completely done what it has to do. It's then going to get our activity indicator to then stop animating. So just the complete polar opposite. And again, these only get called upon when the activity indicator or the web view is starting to do something. So we've got that in. We're now going to go straight to build and run. And initially, you're going to see it straight away as there's going to be activity on the screen uh, when it loads up. So you see it starts to animate. And then once our web view is completely fully loaded up, it will then disappear from the view, as you can see there. We're then going to simply go to a different website now. So someone you, one you can see a little bit clearly with the blue um, activity indicator. So let's go to Google. Now Google's going to load pretty quick. So yeah, this will be like a quick blink of the eye. So there, and it's simply gone. I can then refresh the page. And you see it, for that brief second it popped up as it refreshed the page. I can go back. And you see there it starts animating, spinning around, and loading up there. So let's try a different website altogether. Let's try YouTube. YouTube.com and search that and again that's simply quickly loaded up and done itself there we can go back so there we go so every time our web view gets called upon to perform something it, because it's set to the delica it's going to read those two function statements uh, when the web view starts loading and stops loading and then perform our activity indicator to either start or stop animating so at any given point, we can always indicate to our users that the activity on the screen is happening. So whether they've got a slow internet connection or a fast one, at least they know there is something happening on the screen and your application is not unbroken. So there we go. We simply created in these past free tutorials our nice web browser application all within the Swift language. Hey guys, just before you go, I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial. And if you did enjoy it, make sure you click that big like button down below. And if you'd like to further your knowledge and progress within iOS 9, Xcode 7 for Swift 2 and Objective-C, where you can learn how to create 20 real-life applications, links for these will be below in the description of the video. And if you'd like to learn iOS development on the go, then make sure you check out one of our many iOS applications where you can learn how to create applications again within Objective-C and Swift. The links for these will also be in the description down below. Now, I'd just like to say one last time, if you did enjoy this video and it did help you out in any way, make sure you hit the big like button down below on the video and make sure you check out our website, geeklemon.com, where you can find the full source code for this tutorial and all the others we offer. And make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so you can keep up to date with what's coming here at Geeklemon. So once more, let's thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.